I'm sharing with you how to make the ultimate chocolate chip cookies. Crunchy on the outside, soft and chewy in the center, and filled with dark chocolate chunks. You won't want any other cookie recipe after trying these. Welcome to Recipes by Karina, where I share with you how to make classic and simply delicious recipes. Make sure to subscribe for a new video each week. This chocolate chip cookies recipe will make about 12 large cookies or 24 small cookies. I'll usually double the recipe, baking a few and keeping the rest of the dough in the freezer so freshly baked cookies are only ever a few minutes away. To make these cookies, start off with the butter. We'll need one stick, half a cup or 110 grams. Add it to a large mixing bowl. Make sure your butter is at room temperature as we'll be creaming it with the sugars. You'll notice they give the recipe amounts in metric and imperial, cups, grams and ounces, so no matter where you live in the world, this recipe should be easy enough to follow. If you'd like the full recipe for these chocolate chip cookies, it will be on my website, as well as the full measurements listed in the description box below. To make the best cookies, you'll need two different types of sugar, white granulated sugar and brown sugar. These two sugars do two very different things to the cookies, so it's best not to substitute one for the other when you're in a pinch. The white sugar creates the crunchy outside to the cookies, whereas the brown sugar is what makes the center so soft and chewy. You'll need a third of a cup or 65 grams of white sugar and two thirds of a cup or 130 grams of brown sugar. Using a stand mixer, hand mixer or just with a whisk, you'll need to cream the butter and sugars together until light and fluffy. This should only take about 3-4 to four minutes with the machine, but if you are using a whisk it might take you a little longer. Fun fact about these cookies, I've made them so many times over the years that I don't need the recipe. All the ingredients and the amounts I just know off the top of my head, although it's not exactly a complicated recipe, so there aren't too many ingredients to remember. Make sure you scrape down the edges of the bowl a few times, making sure everything is getting evenly combined. You can see here the butter and sugars have come together, but it's not quite creamed yet. It's mixed, but not light and fluffy like it should be. Continue to mix just for another few minutes and it should be perfect. Not creaming the butter and sugar enough is a common mistake, especially when you make something like these cookies. It's really important to get it right here as incorporating air into the butter and sugar will help the cookies spread more evenly, bake more evenly and have a much nicer texture. You can see here the difference, it's so much lighter in texture as well as colour than when we started. Next we'll need one whole egg. I've played around with just the egg yolk, a whole egg and an egg yolk or two egg yolks and it's never really had any beneficial difference. When you're testing out a recipe, it's really important to understand what each ingredient does to be able to make a smart decision as to whether it's needed or not. The egg in cookies and a lot of baked goods is to provide a binder to keep all of the ingredients together as well as for richness and aeration which these cookies get enough with just one. Finally we'll need 1-2 to two teaspoons of a good quality vanilla extract. I like my cookies quite strong on the vanilla flavour but if you're not a huge fan 1 teaspoon will do. Using your mixer or whisk, combine the ingredients together just until the egg and vanilla are combined. Set the bowl to the side while we measure out the dry ingredients. I like to do this in a separate bowl so I can add the dry ingredients in stages as it can become quite difficult to mix when the flour is incorporated. In a smaller bowl, measure out the dry ingredients. We'll need 1 and 2 thirds of a cup or 210 grams of flour. All purpose, standard or cake flour works great here as we want a low gluten development. We 
We're also going to need one teaspoon of baking soda. It's really important here to make sure you're using baking soda as baking powder will have a very different effect on the cookies. If you like the type of chocolate chip cookies that spread and flatten out, you'll need to use baking soda. If you prefer the type that puff up, almost having a cake-like texture, then baking powder is the one to go for. Finally, we'll need a good pinch of salt and we're ready to combine the ingredients together. Start by pouring half of the dry ingredients into the bowl with the wet. Switch to a wooden spoon here, you don't want to use a whisk, and start to combine the ingredients. It will look quite dry and flaky at first until the butter starts to hydrate the flour. When the dry is mostly combined, add the second half and continue. You want to stop just before all of the flour has been incorporated so we don't overmix as we still have the chocolate to combine. There are a few different choices when it comes to chocolate for these cookies. I would 100% recommend going for a dark chocolate or semi-sweet as these cookies are already sweet so you want something that will cut through that well. My preference is to use eating chocolate rather than chocolate chips. I think it tastes better and I like the chunks but if you want to use chocolate chips, it's completely up to you. You'll need 200 grams or 7 ounces. If you're using a chocolate bar like I am, cut it up into small chunks. They don't need to be uniform size, I really like having smaller pieces mixed up with the larger chunks. Add the chocolate to the mixing bowl and using a wooden spoon, mix through until the chocolate is evenly combined. It'll be quite a stiff dough at this point and a little more difficult to mix. Now to make the perfect cookies, you'll need to rest the dough for 24 hours in the fridge. If you can't wait, you don't have to, they're still going to taste amazing, just not as good as they could be. Resting the dough allows the ingredients to hydrate and allows it to brown better and spread more evenly when baked. It produces a chewier, richer cookie, which is 100% worth waiting that 24 hours for. Of course, sometimes we're impatient and really want cookies now, so if that's you, you can 100% bake them now. When you're ready to bake your cookies, remove them from the fridge, line a baking sheet with non-stick paper, and preheat your oven to 190 degrees Celsius or 375 degrees Fahrenheit. I like to use a cookie or ice cream scoop to portion out my cookies. I'll link the one I'm using in the description box below if you're interested. This way makes all the cookies the exact same size and makes them uniform so I don't even need to get my hands dirty rolling them out. I'm using a 2 tablespoon scoop which will make about 12 pretty decently sized cookies but you can use a smaller amount, they'll just take a minute or two less in the oven. Place your cookie dough onto the lined baking sheet, making sure to give them a good amount of space in between as they will spread out. Before placing them in the oven, I like to sprinkle with a little flaky sea salt, but this is completely optional. I love the flavours of salty and sweet with these cookies, so delicious. Place the cookies into the oven for about 9 minutes or until they've spread and the edges are just starting to brown. Depending on the size of the cookies in your oven, they could take a few minutes more or less, so make sure to keep an eye on them. I know in my oven it's just over 9 minutes and they are perfect every time. Remove the cookies from the oven, they will be puffy but they'll start to fall as they cool. Leave them for about 5 minutes on the baking sheet before transferring them to a wire rack to cool completely. They're the most delicious still warm out of the oven, so just leave them to cool long enough that you don't burn your fingers. The cookies will last about 3 days in an airtight container, but they like most baking are freshest and best the day you bake them. I hope you try out these cookies, it's one of my most favourite recipes and I've made it more times than I can count. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on my next video.